Okay, folks, welcome to another episode of Panda Outdoors and 4B4s. I think this is part three of the Pajera build. Um, you've seen the uh, intro to it, you've seen us fitting the wheels and tyres, and you've also seen the test drive of it, and the update with the new roof rack, and Tommy driving it. Okay, so what this video is going to be, this is going to be the lift kit uh, in this video. So we're going to go over how to fit the lift kit. I've fitted lift kits before, I'm no mechanic. A little disclaimer in this video, I'm no mechanic. This is what works for me. I'm not saying it's the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. It's just what works for me. And I'm not going to do all the power of editing where I'm going to make it look like a dead easy job. It's real life. You see these videos on YouTube where people do it and it takes them 10 minutes. This is not going to take 10 minutes. I'm going to tell you if it's a ball uh, But a few little tips what I've learned over doing lift kits now because I've done three, uh, four of them. Um, Loads and loads of WD-40. Okay, so I've had Andy pre-lubing this um, for weeks. So I've had him just coming out, spraying WD-40 on all the bolts. The last thing you need is a seized one. We first L200, I could have blew on it, and the nuts come undone, it was perfect. My second L200, the bolts were seized in. I had to phone in reinforcements. I had to get one of my mates to come down and use the oxyacetylene with me and loosen all the wheel nuts off, uh, loosen all the bolts off in the suspension. So again, um, be prepared for that. If you are having a go with this, be prepared of it. Uh, and always have, it helps if you've got friends who can help you in the know. Luckily I have, so I don't mind having a go uh, before I've got to pay somebody out. But if you're unsure of what you're doing, just pay a professional to do it. Better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so I'm going to bring you along for this because we couldn't find any videos on the internet um, of anyone doing this lift kit or explaining what to do. So that's why we're bringing you along. It's the first time we videoed anything like this. So it might be me behind the camera and Andy taking the bolts off or vice versa. It all depends. Um, so we're going to give this a go. Again, I hope you're liking this video. And please, if this video is helpful to anybody, put it in the relevant groups or share it to anybody that's got a Pajera. As I say, the Japanese cars are getting a lot more popular now um, over the Land Rovers just because of the COVID tax on the Land Rovers. They seem to have gone through the roof. You can still pick up a bit of a bargain with your Pajeras, your L200s, your Suzuki Jimnys, um, your Nissan Toranos. So they are getting a little bit more popular. And they're basically the same. What we're gathering is, brief look at this, the setup on the lift kit is very similar to the Nissan the Nissan Toronto we've got. Okay, so I'm going to bring you along for this. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned. Let's, let's get into it. Okay, so we've just swapped the... Um, Ramps were on the outside on the two poster because the four poster we couldn't do it on. Okay, so it looks pretty simple. What we've got to do, simple, uh, saying that loosely, it could be an absolute nightmare. We don't know yet. So there's a, on the shocker up here, as you can see, there's a locking nut and there's a nut underneath it. But to undo that locking nut, you can press it and pull it out. If you just look under here, where the spanner is, we've got to undo this bolt and take that out to remove the shocker that should drop down then for us to get the spring out uh, and then we've got to uh, remove this bolt as you can see i've just started loosening it to make sure it was loose uh, to remove that so this will drop down and we'll get a lot more clearance and the axle will drop down for us to get the shocks off on both sides um, i'll get as much footage as i can of us undoing it uh, but again we've got to get this done so I'm not going to faff about filming loads, but just the basics. You undo that, that, that bolt there, the bolt at the bottom to remove your shock absorber. And then I have no idea what that's called. Is it a panyard arm or something? Panyard arm. Um, to remove that is this bolt. But it has to be, the vehicle has to be lifted in the air off the wheels to give you enough clearance to get this bolt out the back. Otherwise, you won't get it off. Um, okay, I'll bring you back once we've. We're about to take the shock off. Bring you back shortly. Yeah. 
Okay, so as you can see, we've got it. Uh, Brani and Andy have got it on. I've just had to go and do a tyre for somebody. So the new shock is on. The spring's on. Um, what we didn't film, because there was a lot of effing and blinding. Um, and tools getting thrown. So you know it's not as easy. This was seized up here. So um, one of my mates come down from another garage. Helped us unseize it. And then this was on tight. So we got that off with loads of heat. Um, mole grips and some big spanners to get that loosened off it took us a while um, once we did remove the shock what we done was we lowered the vehicle to the floor I stood on one side and he stood on the other and we loosened if you see here we loosened this off so we loosened this off um, so we could get the clearance to just give it a little bit more of a drop while we stood on it to get it off so we could get the old spring off that's there uh, and then putting it back on, Andy was pulling down, and Brani just forced them in. Uh, so that's how you done that. So you put them the right way around as well. And make sure when the springs go in, they have to go in a certain way. The top's flat, the bottom's rounded. Okay, so as Brian was saying, the top of the spring is flat, and the bottom's rounded. And if you look there, it just locates into here. Again, apologise for the footage, but it's a bit hard, because we're just figuring this out as we go. So, we're just showing you. Okay, again on this side, you can see through there, the spring is just located in the right place. And now Andy is going to just attach the shock absorber, the new shock absorber in, and it just pops in through the hole up here. Okay, easiest way to do it is keep the shock depressor on, so you can get it all bolted in, and then all you're going to do is just cut it off. Washer. Where's the washer? Done it, yeah. That'll do, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you just got to get the rubber and the bush over so the washer goes on the side where the shocker is and then as you can see Brian is just guarding it in there and then if you can see it will just pop in here you know sir okay and then it just popped up there okay so what we've got to do is you put the first bolt on and then tighten it all up and then what you do, you put a lock and bolt on, just exactly the same as the other one. Okay, so we're now on to the front. Um, we haven't filmed a little bit, uh, just because we've had a few issues. So um, you've got to undo, if you can see, I know the lighting's a bit bad. There's a bolt just on the top there, if you can see. Um, you've got to undo that bolt. Um, and... That's the top of the shocky. Remove the bush uh, from there, and then the shocky will be able to depress and come through. Then just down the bottom there, you have got to remove this as well. You don't need to take off the wishbones. Uh, apparently, you don't need to undo the wishbones. You can get them to slide in. Um, Andy is going to have to remove these at some point because I think he needs a new gaiter, a new boot, and a drop drop um, drop link. But again. Um, they are later jobs. Today we're just doing a lift kit for them. Um, as you can see, this side, the shocky's been removed. Um, and the new one is ready to go in. When you're putting the shockies in, keep the 
to do the little like strap around it to depress it so you can fit it in nice and easy what we are what we are doing now is i'll show you in a sec we're just going to put the bolts in a vise wire brush them all up put some copper grease on them so when they go in they won't st stick or seize this bolt was seized that's why we haven't had the camera out because we have been using heat uh, so it all hands on deck and andy's not very good on the tool so uh, it was me and brownie and uh, we're getting it out for him so again if you're doing this at home some sort of decent blowtorch okay i think you get them in screw fix for like 60 quid they are really good uh, i'm using a little snap on one but the ones in screw fix are a lot better um that you get so little blowtorch basic halford socket set i'll be able to do this a good steady lump hammer and a big screwdriver and i don't think you'll go far wrong tools wise again i hope this video has been helpful it's a little bit hit and miss because obviously we're all on the tools we're all trying to get it done with it being a sunday uh, we want it off the lift for monday morning um so again um just share this to any group if it's any good for you okay i'll bring you back when we're reassembling it okay okay so as you can see now just make sure you give everything a wire brush before you put it back on goes clean so the bushes sit all nice and flush and then what you want to do is wire brush all your bolts when you go put them back on because you don't get new bottom bolts uh, and copper grease them up so they won't they won't seize anymore okay so what you want to do as i said you don't need to take undo your ball joints or anything like that all you've got to do is you need to compress the shocky and it will just slide in okay so you slide it in through the top and then locate it okay and then what you want to do is get the bottom bolt in and then compress it down Okay, so you keep it compressed down, and then all you do, you're gonna fit the bush on top. If Andy weren't such a fanny with big, massive gloves on, we wouldn't have an issue. Okay, the grommet has to go facing upwards on the top of the bush and send it straight home. Give it a little wiggle, and it should slide in. You know what to do, lads. Bit of blue fit dads there, bit of blue fit dads. And then the next one goes on, push on first, little grommet facing down, and the washer on the top. And then again, you get a locking nut one, which is a thicker one. Sorry, you get the normal bolt, which is a thicker one. That'll go on now, and then you get a locking one as well for the top. Again, when you're putting the bolts back in, make sure they go in the same way. So on this, the bolt went in from the front to the back and you'd also get a lock on washer that goes on um, before you put the bolt on and then i'll bring you back in a sec showing you i was tightening the top of the shock here okay so we put the bigger bolt on as you can see just there and then brian has just got a ratchet spanner now and he's just going to tighten it down a little bit. It says it's tightening, so you just start pulling them out for the bushes. Okay, so as Ronnie said, you just want to tighten them up just till it starts to bulge a little bit. Okay, that's how you know you're having over tightened them and then there's a bit of play so the bush can move again we're not mechanics i'm a tire fitter brownie's a security manager and andy's we found him somewhere um i'm only joking andy's like a manager in it um so none of us are mechanics we're just all having a go learning to fix our own bags of shit okay so as you see then when you put the locker nut on you put a spanner on the bottom one and just nip it up just like that okay we'll bring you back in a sec when we get all the wheels back on
okay so as you can see now we've swapped lifts again um we've put the shocks on the front and we've put the new springs and shocks on the back what we're going to do now is adjust the torsion bars on the front to give the front the extra lift to marry up now with the back okay so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to put my tape measure in the middle of the hub and take a reading which is 52 centimeters okay to the middle of the hub on this side so we've got 52 centimeters we've got 52 centimeters on the driver's side and then we'll come around now and do the passenger side and again we have okay the driver's side's centimeter shorter so there's 51 on that side which the, the passenger side will always be a bit lower okay the driver's side will always be a little bit higher when there's no weight in it once the driver sits in gives it a little drop so all we're going to do now we're going to adjust it a little bit and give it a little bit more height okay so i'll show you where the torsion bars are in a second and it's as easy as just crack it off with a spanner and send it up we're going to use a buzz gun but you could just use a ratchet torque wrench whatever you've got or a strong arm okay so i'll bring you back now okay so we're under the vehicle now um these are the torsion bars okay so these are the torsion bars so these are the torsion bar adjusters i think they're called um as i say once again we're no mechanics but these are the torsion bar adjusters so what we're going to do we're going to just loosen the bolt off if you can just see at the top there loosen it off slightly and then we are just going to adjust these and it will send the vehicle up that's how we're going to get our lift okay we're going to do that on both sides so in theory the driver side will be a centimeter uh, taller than the passenger side so that's what we're going to do uh, is send these up we'll get on the flat ground and then i'll give you a walk around and show you um the height what it looks like when it's all done but i will bring you along in a sec as we are adjusting them and you can watch us do that Okay, folks, so as you've just seen, uh, we finished off. We sent the torsion bars up and we have gone up two inches on the front, two inches on the rear. Um, once the suspension all settles, it should level itself out as well. Um, once we've given a nice run. Again, we're not mechanics. We're just going with of what we've told. If you know any better ways of doing it, please drop it in the comments. Um, if it's just being a knobhead, um with no bad comments about it don't bother but constructive criticism we don't mind as i say we're learning we're just getting our vehicles um getting used to maintaining our vehicles our off-road slash bug out vehicles um and that was the lift kit all done fitted in the next episode of the pajera build uh, we're going to go through a service so we're going to change the oil uh, oil filter fuel filter and new oil um and we'll give it a good once over and just check any other little bit so we'll give it an oil change and stuff like that uh, on the next video okay so as you can see the pajera is coming along nice so again stay tuned for the next one going to show you how to drop the oil and put new oil in and stuff like that okay so i've been panda thanks for watching uh, and as you've seen in this video we have brani and andy we were all on it um, but again, I hope you're enjoying the videos. If you think this video was relevant or could help anybody else out, uh, please share it away in any relevant groups. That would be perfect. And if you can, drop us a like and hit that little bell icon. Um, 
and it'll tell you when any new videos are up. Stay tuned for the next one. Stay safe and stay prepared.